Welcome everyone to our Huntsman Knows How podcast. This is Donna Dare with Huntsman Communications, and we're thrilled to be discussing Huntsman's battery material solutions and how Huntsman is enabling tomorrow's technologies. I'm excited to be joined today by our battery material experts, Dr. Jersey Gazda, Director for Battery Technologies, Dr. Jay Henderson, Global Marketing Manager for Advanced Technologies, and Dr. Michael Kramer, Senior Technical Manager for Global Automotive. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Happy Good morning. Pleasure. Thank you. So I'd like to start our conversation by talking about all the recent news surrounding electrification. How do you think all these announcements from the automotive OEMs are going to affect battery manufacturers and the supply chain in general? We definitely are seeing quite a lot of investment into the space and in investment specifically, not just in research, but in magnif- manufacturing and new technologies that are coming into manufacturing space. Uh, in Europe, currently is about 24 different factories under construction or announced. Uh, in US, we're looking at about 12 to 14 plants that are being announced in different forms and different timeline. Over the next five to seven years, you're going to see some of those plants come in, some of them disappear. But in the end, we're going to see the transport convert into the electric and at least mainstream in cities. And uh, there'll be a little bit different environment for us. Any thoughts from you, Jay, or Michael? What's really exciting about uh, you know, what, what automakers are doing right now is they're, they're putting a stake in the ground. They're saying, we're going to have a certain percentage of our fleet that is going to be battery electric vehicles. Uh, we are going to meet certain sustainability goals, not just in the United States, but all around the world. All the, all the global brands have sustainability goals um, and very specific goals around reducing carbon footprint and said, we're going to do this. And it's going to be a significant percentage. But the real challenge is the supply chain situation, um, as mentioned. Um, it's, it's very daunting, of course. And what automakers are doing is looking to better integrate with just like with chip manufacturers, but also with batter manufacturers, um, do a better job in terms of backward integration, whether it's partnerships, acquisitions, um, the investments they're making. Really, in my own backyard in Lake Orion, Michigan, um, the plant, the Ford plant there is making a $6 billion investment. So um, these companies are putting their money where their mouth is. So for the listeners who may not know Huntsman, can you describe for them how Huntsman plays in this space. What are the types of areas in and around the battery where Huntsman offers solutions? I think what you want to talk about is the whole infrastructure around the battery. I'm an expert on a cell and what goes inside of the cell, right? And there we have 38 components that some of them could be a Huntsman products. Uh, but I think overall, as a battery and, and a supply chain for that, it's going to require a lot more different materials because the pack requires something. It requires uh, electrical connections, electrolyzed insulation, electrolyzed polymers that go inside uh, for cooling purposes, thermal management, and so on. Yeah, I, I think it's it's interesting to watch because there's so much change, not just in, it's not just about the battery, right? It's about the entire vehicle. And, and we're seeing a change there um, throughout. Right. It's you're making the vehicle out of maybe, you know, there's light weighting opportunities. And so you've got maybe different adhesives that need to be used. There's different sound frequencies that have to be dealt with. So you need different, you know, polyurethane foams. Um, You've got different types of motors that need different types of insulation, which is, you know, speaks to some of the AdMat products. you know, it's 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 really throughout the vehicle, and and you're seeing a tremendous number of changes. Uh, then you also have within the vehicle, you have changes in in the actual. You know, you don't have a combustion engine; you have a battery, and so now you have totally different materials that are going in there. You've got, you know, the cobalt, the lithium, the electrolytes, the salts, the all sorts of things. And so, um, one of the nice things about Huntsman as, as just we're positioned well because we play in in a lot of these areas and we have a lot of technologies that go down from the dispersant in the in in, in the cathode slurry for example, to yeah. the solvent for the slurry to the carbon uh, conducting additives and, and then all yeah. the way out you know yeah yeah so inside of cell 
Mm -hmm. If I can touch on that point. So yes, we do have solvents that we produce at Huntsman that correspond to about 80% of the total electrolyte. Uh, we have options to put in uh, novel binders, which allow us, it essentially acts like an adhesive to, to connect all the particles within, this, uh, within the electrode. Um, and we have uh, programs which are looking at novel solid electrolytes, which are going to be coming in as the next technology, maybe three to five years into the vehicles. But it is something that we're working already now. One of the interesting things is that I think Huntsman's doing a really great job of working cross-divisionally and cross-functionally. Uh, it's very difficult for big chemical companies to do that, but we're finding opportunities to make materials from multiple divisions go together to, to provide a joint solution. And that collaborative approach is, is really, um, I, I think it's really unique for a large chemical company. Michael, in today's rapidly advancing electrification environment, what challenges or pain points are manufacturers trying to address? In the global automotive business, I mean, a, a few of the big challenges really in battery electric vehicle are um, acoustics is definitely a challenge because it is a completely different acoustic profile from a uh, electric vehicle versus a uh, internal combustion engine. Um, but really where it really affects us in terms of going into uh, new growth areas and where our customers, obviously, and ultimately the OEMs, the automakers, are um, challenged right now is growing in battery electric vehicle is safety. I mean, safety is extremely important with regards to you know managing thermal runaway events um, in the case of an accident or in the case of a battery malfunction. Um, that um, you know that's very important in terms of really the enclosure, the packaging, the the, all the semi-structural and structural elements that are around a battery for a battery electric vehicle. And those safety standards are continuing to increase and become more and more rigorous. And all the packaging around a battery um, has to perform, not only perform duty as safety, but also manage um, other aspects of battery performance. For example, electromagnetic interference shielding um, where that's also an important performance aspect that, you know, materials, there's, it's a big ask for a lot of materials um, in this space. And there are numerous options. Um, the incumbent option is a challenge to displace, which is really metallic materials. Um, metal materials, we have over 100 years of data on that um, in terms of crash and impact. So, you know, the opportunity really for uh, a company like Huntsman is really in solving problems around really uh, managing runaway thermal events and also, you know, in terms of acoustics, electric magnetic interference. So um, we have a palette of materials and options and solutions that, um, you know, we're, we're exploring the fit, you know, with, with this particular segment, which really is around um, the semi-structural aspects, you know, speaking for the global automotive business. That's an interesting uh, set of requirements. So uh, obviously we're working on safety and that's the number one priority for us as well. So on a cell level, inside of the battery, uh, we're trying to develop solutions which would be a safer electrolyte. Um, if you also look at uh, the rest of a battery pack, uh, our composite solutions are being considered as uh, part of the battery pack to replace the metal parts and casings. And that's partially driven by uh, trying to lightweight the vehicles so replace some of the steel and aluminum that's being used in those parts currently uh, in electric vehicles and put a composite material in there. Uh, that's coming in from our aerospace area, right? We've been supplying to aerospace, uh, Boeing and others that uh, create composite uh, fuselages and window, wind, uh, sorry, uh, wings. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we have the experience in, in a composite materials for supplying fuselages and, and wing uh, type uh, resins and, and solutions. And we're translating those solutions over to develop uh, new lightweight and uh, high strength uh, crash resistant battery boxes for some of our customers. Uh, if we look at thermal runaway, that's another area which uh, Michael mentioned as a very important uh, we have uh, thermal management materials, which are, again, uh, based on polymer combined with uh, some of our carbon nanotube technology that allows us to move the heat out of the box and transfer it out in between the cells into the, into the cooling system of that, that works within the battery. 
Yeah, and I think that that's a really interesting point, Jersey, because y you talk about how we're applying some of our experiences in the aerospace industry into now the electric vehicle industry. And I, I think we see that across all of our divisions. We're, we're really taking decades and decades of experience in some of these chemistries and applying them in new and interesting ways, right? We, we have our, our dispersants for um, carbon additives. We're originally um, from technology that we worked on in the paints and coatings industry. And we can apply that and we, because we have the expertise in changing those molecules and making new molecules, we can take what we've learned over decades of dispersions and slurry manufacturing to, to apply that to a new area. But then you're also looking at the broad types of, of needs from customers in the battery industry. Some people need cheaper batteries and they want LFP and some people want longer range and they, you know, uh, better fast charging. And so they're going to need better conductivity within the electrodes. And so everybody needs a different thing. And what we're seeing is batteries going from being sort of just your laptop battery to being, you know, hundreds of different kinds of batteries, right? You know, you've got your, I drive a, an old truck with a four cylinder engine and some people on my floor drive, you know, BMWs with much, much nicer engines, right? And so we're seeing batteries automotively going that way. So combining all of our different materials for different solutions for different customers, whether it's safety or fast charge or cost or capacity, um, it, it's an interesting way to take, to, to solve a lot of different um, customers' problems, but also using expertise that we've developed over decades. Right, and the sustainability, right, sustainability of, of these processes and safety of the processes. Because we're talking about vehicle and how the vehicle behaves, but also we need to talk about people who are actually working and making these batteries, right? How do we help them? Right, and, and we also see opportunities for our dispersants maybe in some aqueous or semi-aqueous where you can get away from solvent entirely. So that That's is, true. there's also opportunities there. How are we working to address our customers' needs over the next several years? I mean, I think if you're looking at the next couple of years, our customers need supply security. That's the main thing. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking at, a lot of these battery facilities are coming online between now and 24, 25, and you start building out all of these facilities. And, you know, what we're trying to do is make sure that we're not that one that's too late right? That we, we bring in the capacity when our customers need it and we're there uh, when, they're, when their battery fab opens up, they're, they've got solvents. Michael, how you see that? You know, what's really uh, a pain point for customers is range anxiety, for example, and also really the overall weight of the vehicle for the manufacturer. And that's really where material selection comes in for some semi-structural and also acoustic performances. I mean, our challenge and our opportunity is really the lightweighting part where batteries are inherently heavy. They're replacing the engine in an internal combustion engine. They're replacing that with fairly heavy batteries. The package cannot be a part of the problem. It's gotta be a part of the solution. So in closing, what investments has Huntsman committed to in supporting the battery market? For our carbonates, we are, we are consuming CO2 that would otherwise be released into the atmosphere. We are uh, also removing uh, ethylene oxide uh, off, the, off the road for one of our proposed projects. Um, we're also, for our Miralon, we're removing methane that would otherwise be released into the atmosphere. So all of these projects are not only great for the point perspective of um, supplying the, the battery industry, but also from the perspective of sustainability. And we're really trying to focus on um, what we're calling the um, return on invested carbon. Um, looking at, you know, if, if we're gonna consume energy or, or chemicals to make materials, we want them to have a life cycle that also reduces uh, the impact to um, emissions or energy or uh, whatever it may be. Um, we're gonna put a lot of energy maybe into making some of our materials, but we want them to, over the course of their lifetime, have a benefit to the sustainability. Any final thoughts before we go today? Oh, well, it's an exciting time for Huntsman. I think that's what we're looking at, uh, probably in my career, which is close to 30 years right now, if I date myself. But it, uh, what we're looking at is the only industry that is going to really grow at the very rapid 
pace over the next five to seven years. Uh, by 2030, the battery industry in the U.S. is going to be three to five times the size. And we have this great opportunity to be participating in that and be leading in that area. Yeah. You're right. I mean, a uh, uh, hundred years ago, people probably didn't realize the impact that combustion vehicles were going to have on society. I mean, it fundamentally changed not just people's ability to go door to door, house to house, whatever. It, it changed our, our commerce, our, our, our logistics, shipping material made us a global world, really, in so many ways. And, you know, it's it's we're in automotive now, but then it's energy storage and then it's um commercial vehicles and then big trucks and trains and then planes and then everything right and so it's just it's a fundamental change in our world and we get to be a part of it and that's pretty cool you don't get to do that very often well i want to thank all three of you for your time today and sharing your insights with us it's great to hear about huntsman's contributions to this market and how it impacts the electric vehicles of tomorrow we invite anyone who's listening, if you have questions or want to know more about the material solutions discussed today, you can send those to Huntsman Knows How at Huntsman.com. Thank you all for tuning in.